We all know this guy, John Flaherty, dude. Thank you so much for hopping on the feed. We got some of your best social media posts. Are you ready to check them out? I'm ready to check it out. There aren't many posts <laughs> out there, so I'm interested to see what you have. Well, we found them. All right, cool. First off, we're going throwback off the bat. So this is 1990 Pawtucket Red Sox, Matt, and uh, I actually went from single A ball all the way to triple A. And when I look at this, I'm like, holy cow, what, how young I look. But also, I had no idea what I was doing, right? I went from A ball, where I thought I had a good year, and then I got promoted to AAA, which, you know, AAA is a bunch of men, right? The guys who have had big league experience, they come back down. I was totally overwhelmed by that level. I actually had to go back to AA the next year. So when I see that, I look at it and say, you know, that kid thought he knew what was going on, but he had no idea how to, how to be a pro. And it brought you to such a great career, and you've gotten a chance to collect so many cool things and be a part of so many great experiences in Major League Baseball, and this is one of them. Give the backstory behind this baseball. This is one of my favorites. <laughs> uh, I'm glad that you bring this up. This was a baseball that uh, I was warming up Jose Contreras with in the bullpen. Uh, when Aaron Boone hit the home run to send us to a World Series, my only World Series, my first World Series. And uh, this baseball was left in my locker the day after that night. And Mike Borzello, who was our bullpen catcher at the time, who's still a good friend of mine, he wrote the, the inscription on there that said this was the ball that Jose Contreras was throwing when Booney hit the home run. Wow. Uh, got me to a World Series. And, you know, I have signed baseballs by Hall of Famers and all these great players. That is a moment I'm never going to forget. A moment I'm still getting a little... I know, I was about to say, uh, you can look at my arm and see mine too. <laughs> yeah, I'm remembering it right now. It was a, a great moment and that World Series in 03 didn't work out, but I'll never forget that moment. All right, like I said before, we all know who this guy is. You could see him on Yes, the Yes app, pre-game show, post-game show, yeah. doing commentary, play-by-play, -play, all this stuff for Yes. And this is a post from Troy Benjamin, one of our producers. This is the final game of the season, but here you are with the entire Yes Network Gamecast crew. So you know what, Matt, the, the, the best part about retiring, or I should say the worst part about retiring as a player is you miss the team aspect, right? And then I see this video, the best part of working for Yes is you get to be part of that team aspect again. I mean, when I see that video of all the great people that we work with at Yes, most of them are behind the scenes. Uh, that doesn't take away from what they do to make us look good every night, either in the studio, doing the game, on the road, whatever it is. Uh, I love the team aspect of everything that I've ever done. I love being on the road with the guys that we travel with, with Yes, and you do the game, and then you get to enjoy it afterwards, and you break down what went well, what didn't go well. I've been lucky enough that at the Yes Network, I, I still get to enjoy that part of it. Yeah, and you even still get to enjoy being on the actual field at Yankee Stadium, too. You got probably one of like the, uh, like a dream all access pass that every Yankee fan, Yankee player wishes that they have between doing the stuff at Yes Network and still being involved with the Yankees. You know, again, uh, the Yes Network has been great to me, Matt, in that they let me enjoy that day. And I'm actually proud of myself at 55 years old, soon to be going to be 56. I actually had the wherewithal, like, I'm going to take a video of this, right? I'm going to get Mariano. I'm going to get Derek when they're walking uh, to, the, to the Yankee wives, Thurman Munson's wife, Diana, down there, and they were saying hello. And I actually, I'm usually not very good at recognizing the moment. I let it go by and I'm like, ah, oh, I should have taken a video or a picture. So I was proud of myself for getting a couple of videos and got a great selfie with uh, Jorge and Derek that day too. Dude, I was about to say, it's like you knew the next one that was coming. Again, and this is one of those, <laughs> I am not very good at this, right? And Jorge is one of my favorites, right? I would say out of everybody that I played with in my 14 years, Jorge and I were close, right? And. Uh, I think I, I told him when I made that team in 03, I said, dude, I don't want your job. I know how good you are. I want to be your backup and I want to give you one day off a week where you can have a great year. So we were pretty tight. So I wanted a selfie with him. I had no idea that Derek was going to be behind <laughs> us photobombing it. Uh, it turned out to be uh, a great picture, a great <laughs> moment. And yeah, that one's not going to be erased from the phone for a long time. I'm going to keep going back to that one. Amazing. All right, how about this one? You tweeted this out a long time ago, and you said that kids who came to the house, I guess probably your son or, or, or daughter's friends came over, yeah. and said that they really liked this photo. Yeah, because you know the, my, my kids' friends knew me as Kristen, Brian, and Logan's dad, right? They don't know me, and they couldn't care less about being a player, but when they saw Sandler there, and you know, he threw out the first pitch, and we had a great moment there, 
they thought that was really cool. Like all of a sudden, my 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 cred rose a little bit uh, with that younger generation, and we had a really nice time before that game started. And the pitch wasn't so bad either. Amazing, so cool. All right, so we're talking a lot about your baseball career, your broadcast career, and yes. Uh, you also give back so much and uh, you're a fan favorite but you're also a favorite in your community. You do a lot of work around, especially in New Jersey, but just giving back to, to the community. These are tough, you know, we we're just talking about the other pictures and how great they were and you know part of what I think is your responsibility as you know an athlete or a public figure, if somebody asks you to help out, you, you go do it. And uh, those days aren't easy, you know, you come away or you go into it with some nerves and anxiety and you know, I don't know if these kids want to see me, right, you know, and, you know, how is it going to be? And then you get there and you experience it and, and maybe you put a smile on somebody's face or maybe a parent comes up to you and says, you know, thank you. You, you, you made my child forget about things for a few minutes. So thanks for sharing that one. And here you are. I think the caption was something like Top Gun style. <laughs> going to Nantucket? Yeah, this was actually <laughs> uh, a fun day and we bid on this. It was a Make-A-Wish Foundation event. Uh, you know, our boss, John Filippelli, and his lovely wife, Jenna, throw a great Make-A-Wish event. And one of the items was uh, to go in a plane, fly to wherever you want to fly to for the day, and you get kind of a lesson from the pilot. Uh, I look a lot more confident going into that <laughs> plane, Matt, than when I was in there. And the pilot actually said, okay, here's a stick. You can fly this thing. It lasted about two seconds. I'm like, I want no part of this. Um, and he was telling us like, oh, if the engine goes out, we'll be able to glide for like six miles. So we'll be fine. It was a fun experience, but uh, I have no desire to be a pilot. You also spent some time at the golf course. This is a, uh, a hole in one, huh? Yeah, this was at Atlantic City Country Club. And that was on the 17th hole which is ironic, my number was 17 with the Yankees. Uh, hit an eight iron up the hill, and it was funny because the head pro at Rockland Country Club was with us, a guy by the name of Bobby Everett, and it was uphill over a bunker, so you couldn't see the ball where it landed or if it went in, and Bobby right away said, it's either long or it's in. And as we drove up to the green, we didn't see a ball on the green, he just looked at me, he said, it's in the hole. And as we walked over there, a buddy of mine picked out the stick and it was in there. So uh, one of those once in a lifetime moments, you know, probably a lot more luck than skill, although I did hit that shot pretty well. It was a, it was a good strike and, you know, something that you can enjoy it with your buddies, which was the greatest part about it. I love the selfie that you took with them too. You made sure that you got the witnesses in the uh, in a photo. Dude, you, you, after your playing days, even after catching all those innings, you're doing triathlons. It's amazing. All right, so there's a backstory to this, right? And, and we talked about giving back. Uh, there was a local charity in Pearl River, New York, uh, and it was to raise money for Huntington's disease, which uh, had a few acquaintances who unfortunately had some relatives who were suffering from that disease. And right away I said, yeah, uh, absolutely. I would love to do it. The running part wasn't gonna be a problem. I figured I could bike 18 miles, right? But I never swam in my life, mm -hmm. ever. You have to swim a half a mile in a lake, out to a buoy, and then all the way back. Now, you don't get to grab onto the side of a pool, right, and <laughs> rest for a little bit. So I jump in the water and I start doing my swim, and after about 50 yards, I'm like, I'm in trouble. So I literally went on my back and did like a, a back stroke for a half a mile, got out of the water, started the, um, the bike portion, then finished the run portion, and as I got through the finish line, I said, I am never doing that again. <laughs> never again. It was, it was great for the, the, the cause, but it was so physically challenging, I said, I'm never going to do it again. All right, so here we go. Here's the last set. Here you are fishing. Yeah, so I'm in, I'm in West Palm Beach here, um, out on a charter boat with my girlfriend, Kristen, and she got this for me for a Christmas present. And I've always been into fishing. As a kid, I would do a lot of freshwater fishing. Uh, now that I have a place in Florida, I wanted to get into the saltwater fishing. And this was fishing for what they call snook down there, which are big during the summer. A great day, a great experience. And I, I do a lot of beach fishing now in Florida, trying to teach myself how to, how to bring in some of these snook. Uh, it's not gonna be as big as that, but I get into it, you know, something to get out there to relax a little bit. Uh, kind of get away from the daily grind and get, get with your thoughts and try to figure out uh, what I'm doing. So that was a great day. It was a great present uh, from my girlfriend and we had a great time. I love how you just try to conquer everything. And we're showing on the screen right now this photo because you did take a picture. 
of the fish, or at least one of the 40 that you caught. Yeah, they, that we caught huge. 40, but they, they get the pictures out right away. And uh, those things were over 40 inches long. They were a great fight. And look at my girlfriend, Kristen, right there. If I would have told her five years ago when we met, she'd be wrestling these guys in. And not only that, holding it up and smiling for a picture, uh, She's a trooper, she's a gamer, we had a great game. And then great maybe day. even jumping in the water and going for a swim with her too. You know what, then after the fact, we went home, cleaned up, and had a nice night on our beach, a nice dinner, it was a great day all the way around. <laughs> so we see all these social media posts, you do a great job of, of putting them up on, on X, but what would you say is your favorite part about social media when it does come to sharing these photos and videos? Well, I'm not very good at it. Uh, I should mention that. I told you I'm very conservative about what I put out there. I don't want a lot of personal stuff to be out there, but there are a few moments that I'm proud of and I say, you know what, this is something I'm going to try to share. But, you know, there there's a lot of things in the position that we're in, Matt. You know, like if I'm doing a game in the booth and you had there's access there to Yankee fans who want to let you know what they're thinking about the job that you're doing. A lot of positive responses and, you know, there's a bunch of negatives too. So, I think I've learned over the years to kind of realize what it is. It's a way to interact with the fans. It's a way to, to give something about what's going on in your personal life. But you know, when the, when the critics and the comments come back, I, I've learned to be able to laugh at it now. I, I wasn't so great when Twitter came out early on. I actually deleted my account after a game one night because I got so upset about what somebody was saying about me. You learn as you get older, it's just all part of it. And uh, to be able to interact with the fans is fantastic. All right, well, now's the time for the plug. Where should everybody go to follow you and why should they follow you? Well, Flash17, I guess, uh, is going to be my X handle. Uh, I just started a newsletter. I do have a website, john flaherty.com, uh, where you know I, I do some speaking engagements and things like that and try to make myself available to see what's out there and engage with some of the fans. So there are a few ways to get in touch with me. Awesome, my man Flash. A lot more great stuff great on the way. You. Thank you so much.